What are you doing in my furnace room besides using electricity? It doesn't use that much electricity, but guess what? What? So I started a whole bunch of daylily seeds. Some I purchased and some that I did in my own garden this year. And I did them exactly a week ago today. Sometimes it takes like two weeks for daylily seeds to germinate. I have little sprouts. You want to see? Look. Look at this guy. Wow. And this guy. And look at, there's two more over here. One, two, and one back there. And then this one I did a couple days later. And look, they're already starting to, to sprout. I see you got some dead fruit flies there. Um, oh, the stupid fungus gnats. I have to get this, um, there's like a, something you can water in that kills fungus gnats. But for now, those little yellow, these things. I got these off Amazon. But they're like little sticky traps because gnats are attracted to yellow. And it does work, but it doesn't like control all of them. It does manage them a little bit, but it doesn't get rid of them. But anyway, so I'm super excited because I spent a ton of moolah on a certain variety of daylily seeds. I wanted clown pants. And if you know, the, the guy that has the clown pants does not sell fans of it. Um, he sells seeds. And it's an awesome, it's, got, it's an awesome gig he's got going because people want it. Um, it's a daylily that has stripes on the sepal petals. Uh, and it's beautiful. Anyway, so he ran a bunch of listings on the um, lily auction and I was lucky enough to like battle it out for a few and they're sprouting. So I'm super excited. Plus he sent me bonus seeds and the two bonus seeds that are beautiful crosses, I only got two seeds, but they are sprouting, both of them sprouted. So I'm like, oh. so not only am I gonna have like good germination rate with his seeds, but I'm also germinating his bonus seeds, which are just as gorgeous. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and that's the good thing about buying daylily seeds on the auction. You always get sellers that will give you like a bonus and you know, you just grow it. You have nothing else to do. It's winter in New York, although it's 50 degrees. It doesn't feel like winter, but this is where I spend my winter people in the basement. And it is not a fabulous basement, <laughs> but it has just enough room to grow stuff. Um, this is my setup. This is my, my grow lights. There are six bulbs um, under on this grow light and I have six down here. So when these guys start to get bigger and I start potting them up into bigger containers, um, I sort of, they get cramped and they get like, we run out of space, but soon April will be here and the weather will be nice enough for me to stick them outside. But this is exciting. So this is what gets me through winter, you know, and my amaryllis, which are gorgeous this year. Um, so is this why you had that mound of dirt on the kitchen island a couple yes, of weeks ago? Yes, and actually people were asking if I was going to film that. I probably should have, but I was so like behind on planting my seeds. If you guys remember, um, I posted a daylily cross that I loved this, um, this year it bloomed. But I planted it Thanksgiving of last year. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, it's December. I have to get my seeds planted because sometimes you can get blooms the same year on daylilies, but you really have to coddle them all winter and they have to be like nine months old before they'll produce a bloom. So yeah, I was like, oh, I gotta get it done, gotta get it done. So that's why the sink and the counters were a mess because I don't have like a greenhouse or a washroom. I have a basement and a sink. So <laughs> I'm making do with it, but it's exciting. So look, so the way I did this daylily seeds, um, I, I've actually did it two different ways. One was I took seedling mix, which is a very light mix. It's not a very heavy potting soil. Um, it's a germination mix, has a lot of perlite in it um, for good drainage. And it's got peat moss in it to kind of retain moisture and have drainage. So I used that. I fill, I, I pre-moistened it. Um, I put it in the sink, added some, you know, water, and then you have to get it just right. You don't want it soaking wet. You just want it moist enough to retain moisture when you water. And then I filled the trays. And once I filled the trays, I took a little pen cap and I made little holes for the seeds. So some of these only have one seed per cell. Some crosses I made had 18 seeds. 
So I put two in each or three in each and we'll see what happens. I don't know if I have room to grow all those, but um, only the strong survive here. So once I planted the seeds, I did use a humidity dome because in our basement, it is so super dry. It's like the warmest room down here because it has the furnace and all the other appliances. Um, so it, they dry out really quick. So I put this over them until I saw one sprout because once you see them sprout, you can get damping off happening, happen, and that is not fun. That is like a waste. So off they are. Whatever's gonna germinate is gonna germinate and you just have to keep them moist. I actually fill the tray with water uh, in the bottom to keep it moist, but I don't do that until I really start to see them dry out, um, you know, up top, so. What about a humidifier? You think that would help if we put a humidifier in here? It would help here? me. We need one, actually, yes, in general. <laughs> I mean, it's always good. It's like, it's really dry, like winter. You're like, like your skin is always really dry and oh, uh, winter is just, what is good about winter? Well, snow is fun and pretty, but there's nothing good. I mean, that, that could be why I'm wearing, you see all this apparatus? I have like all these wires connected to me. I'm wearing a heart monitor for two weeks. Can you believe it? It's horrible. I'm too young for this. How, how are you supposed to get a good read when every time you stand next to me, your heart just flutters? <laughs> you know, that just might be my problem. Actually, I can tell you it probably skipped a few beats when I saw that this clown pants day lily like sprouted. But yes, you do. You have the same effect on me. Usually it goes flat lying around bedtime. Or if you move a caterpillar because, you know, I did get a lot of slack for that. Sorry, guys. I, you know what? I'm real. It is what it is. And you know what? The day I did that, um, we did that video. And you surprised me with it, which I was, I was super happy. Yes, I gave him praise. I was excited. But I had just gotten back from bringing my daughter to the pediatrician. And she had gotten her measles, mumps, and rubella um, vaccinations for kindergarten. So I was like, it's never fun to have to hold your daughter while they vaccinate them. And I'm just like, it was really like stressful for me. So I was edgy already. Um, so to come back and from that and just be like... <laughs> You know, my heart actually has a problem, though. Um, but anyway, I was a little edgy, so I apologize for having such a terrible response. But you know what? It's real life. It is what it is. I'm not perfect. And yes, he tolerates me well. You do tolerate me well. Thank you. I do? <laughs> Sometimes. You wouldn't think so from the comments I get. Oh, I know. So how did it feel? Uh, felt great, You know didn't what? It? I did for once feel like I uh, put myself in your shoes. So, yeah, I did feel a little bad. Yeah. But now I'm over it. So, um, and hopefully everybody else is too. I don't know. I guess everyone is perfect in their life. But, you know. Who you can cares? have a bad day. You can't worry about what these <laughs> hands are pecking on the internet, really. <laughs> Well, anyway, I was a little harsh, though. When I did, when I watched it back, I kind of knew I was going to get a little slack for my attitude, but there was behind-the-scenes circumstances. But anyway, um, but we've moved on. So anyway, so hopefully my ticker is good, and, you know, I don't know. It's not fun being hooked up to wires, but I can tell you they're going to be like, at this time, your heart did this, and I'll be like, yes, because I'm growing super fun things in my basement. Um, yeah, but anyway... So there's not really much going on. It's weird. I don't, I can't like walk around and like show flowers. It's like, this is all I have. It's going to be very boring videos if I do this every, every week. But well, anyway. I'm gonna, well, I'm going to take my shirt off. See if we can get the doctors all confused when your heart just starts going <laughs> no. 10 miles a minute. Uh, no. No? But you know what did get my heart pumping? I will tell you. Um... I know this is going to be really sad. Oh my goodness. I know, but guess what? So someone had posted on Facebook in a gardening forum that Chewy, you know, Chewy.com where you get all like the, our dog food. Actually, look, Chewy.com. Um, you get dog food and stuff. So they apparently had deer fence and this is not the concentrate, which I prefer, but this is the ready to use spray. They had this whole thing, $8.94 each. So... Guess who stocked up on that stuff? Because I use that like all the time. And so I bought a dozen of them. And I am thrilled because you know what? For nine bucks, that is a deal. Nine bucks? Nine bucks. Eight ninety four. I'll chase a deer around with a bedpan for that. 
Uh, there are so many deer outside. You need to, you need a bullhorn. We need like some type of water, like activated water feature somehow just to scare these things off. They're everywhere and the babies don't care. Well, They're it's because you're spraying deer fence all over. They think this is a mating ground or something right. up no. here. Although I've heard that malorganite works too, but it stinks. Like it would stink for us too. This, at least it dries after you spray it. So we don't have to deal too much with it. So don't you think maybe you should have kept that a secret? Cause now everybody's going to go and buy it and then it's going to well, be. I got, I, I got it. No, I, was, I don't mind sharing stuff like that. The guy shared it on a Facebook page and um, I was like, oh, that's actually a really good deal. Because generally this is like 26 bucks by us. What the guy? Players. Mr. Clown Pants no, guy? <laughs> no, there was a guy, there was just a guy on a, a gardening page that I'm on. I don't know if it's addicted to gardening or I don't, you know, everybody has a group now. Um, so anyway, he posted and I went on and it, it was legit. It actually happened. So that was exciting. I was like, okay, I got to jumpstart on deer fence for next year. Cause you know, every year I'm like, I'm going to have like the best season ever. And I, every, every spring I start out gung ho and then they do get me. But what um, is deer fence actually? Do you really know what it is? Yes, I think it's like putrefied egg. It's like rot, basically rotting egg. I, I, I looked that up at one point, except I can't see in here. I'm also getting old. It doesn't say, but I did. Um, I did look this up and it wasn't any, it's not toxic. It's not harmful to animals. It just stinks so bad you would not stick your nose there. So do you think that'll clash with my buck lure that I've been spraying around or? I will kill you. That would be horrible. Well, don't you want venison for don't, Christmas don't, dinner? Don't, don't turn my attitude back to the caterpillar crazy lady because it will. It turns like that, you know. Well. No, that's not allowed. You would not. Although I have to say you did feed the deer one year. Do you remember you were, you went to buy grain for the deer? Yeah. Yeah, and stuck it in the driveway. I'm like, oh my God, these are these are the relatives of the deer that are like, this guy is so giving. He feeds us in the winter. No, we're not doing that anymore. Well, how would you like to be a poor deer with no food? You know what? They have plenty of food. They eat everything I plant. And right now they can have whatever's out there. Which is much of nothing. Pretty much. It's Maybe. so sad and depressing, isn't it? I know. We should do a December garden tour where we walk <laughs> around and just... Actually, we could do that right now because you can see, like, the bones of everything. Um, I still have this shade garden to clean up. I haven't even done it yet. It's been snowed on twice. Uh, but I did pick up all the tools and everything. Remember, we got, like, okay, a freak storm, six inches out of nowhere. But anyway... That's long past, and now we have warm temperatures again, which is not necessarily good for plants, but, um, but yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to show everybody, but back to, man, I can ramble, can I? Oh, goodness gracious. So back to the thing, um, when I planted these and put the humidity dome on and then they sprouted, there's another way you can do it, and that is by putting um, your seeds in a wet paper towel with one cap full like let's say you use you should use a bigger bottle than this but if you have a pull and spring water bottle um you should use water bottled water and you put one cap full of hydrogen peroxide in the cap and dump it in the water bottle use that to wet your paper towel otherwise it's going to stink and rot and whatever you have in your water is just going to be horrible um and these i put in late Later so than these. why are you putting hydrogen peroxide in? It Won't stops that... it from really rotting, and it's it's kind of like a. It's not going to bleach your lilies. Oh my god, these are these are sprouting. So this is actually what happened, and look, it's starting to mold a little bit. Um, so look, the little root is coming out. Who knew you could grow a plant <gasps> out of a rabbit turd? So look, That's this awesome. tiny little thing, and then it breaks. Oh my gosh! So these are. I better check these. So what kind of lilies are those? So this is Next Stop Wonderland timed times my large purple seedling. Isn't that a fabulous name? This is a seedling I grew from seeds like three years ago that I bought um, that doesn't have a name. So I just call it large purple seedling because that's what it is. How does it um, not have a name? It doesn't have a name because I grew it. So you grew it. Yeah. Just haven't come up with a name yet. No, but it is pretty and I, and I did hybridize the heck out of it. Um, and you know what? The seeds are working. They're starting to open. So I have to, I actually have to plant these. So you have like a bunch of varieties, like every row is a different variety of a lily in yes. here, right? 
And what I did was I used, um, I used, uh, what is that called? Duct tape. Because <laughs> I'm fancy like that. Um, so this is like Clown Pants Overload. That was the name of the auction. And then I just basically, I, I uh, what is that called? I abbreviated the names. So what is wrong with me tonight? Um, and then, he, so I just marked them all down and how many seeds I put in. So like if there's five seeds in five cells, then I know I have one in each. And I kind of know what I did. There's not that many, but there's 85 cells that I planted up. Plus all these daylily seeds that are starting to sprout that I have to plant up. Uh, and then I kind of have to decide like, which ones am I going to like see through to the spring? Because I obviously can't. I know, where are you going to plant all these? 85 day lilies. So why did you plant 85 day lilies? Do you think because like... Because it's winter! How many? What, I don't know, because I don't know what's going to sprout. So I'm not going to get 100% germination, um, but it's looking good so far. Like I'm getting good, I'm getting good percentage. I mean, 100% on these two. <laughs> but I don't And know. all these are different as well. See, look at these. I mean, these have all been in the same baggie. And three have sprouted and the rest have not. So you don't know. So do you do that before you plant them or the other ones you just threw them in the dirt? No. So this is the second way that you can sprout them. You can throw them in a paper towel because I didn't have, I didn't have like the soil. I didn't, you know, I kind of ran out um, of the soil and now I have more. But at the time I was like, well, I'll just sprout them. See if that, see if they sprout, see if they're viable and Lo and behold, they are. So I do have to get those in the soil right now. Could you put them in brawny paper towels? Because they are kind of manly paper towels, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Well, you're you're always there for me with your jokes. Well, we yes. wouldn't want to collide. We wouldn't want your lilies to come out with a beard or anything like oh that, my right? God, no. Well, actually, they have bearded lilies. Yeah. Well, that's what they I do. Mean. Actually, there was a guy, um, Brad Best, I think, is the hybridizer who has like. They have bearded daylos. It's amazing. It has all of this sort of like, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of new to me. I, I did order one of his lilies last year just to just to see what it looks like and what it does. Um, but he's got some amazing stuff. It's just, you know, if I had a, if I had a really deep pockets, I'd be like in deep trouble because this is actually helping me stay down. got an awful there. lot of flower guys you're talking to on the internet there honey well, I'm, no i'm not talking to them i'm, I'm like I'm, I'm like throwing my money at them really <laughs> they usually they throw money at the women but no no i'm, I'm trying to be like you want to send me like something that i can afford um don't make me find a few flower girls that <laughs> i have to talk to yeah. on the oh yeah. i'm all the flower girl you need honey oh I, i'm well aware of that yeah well, anyway, so You're blooming, baby. So this is like this is exciting because it's just it gives me something to do over the winter. Uh, and then what else? What else am I gonna do? I don't know. I have um, a whole bunch of. I actually have a seed packet um, that I sent out for the giveaway that I'm going to go through and give you guys instructions when to plant them, how to plant them. There's nothing pressing right now that you have to like start them indoors. You can start them all outside. You can do some winter sowing. Uh, you can just plant them ahead of time if you want to use lights. Uh, you can do that. So I'll go through the timing. We still have some time for that yet. Uh, and I have to film it. We have to film it yet. So uh, when we get around to it, holidays are a little crazy. And we have some sad news like our two dogs, um, Otis and Ziggy, the two brown pups um, had to be put down. Well, gee, nothing like just taking the wind out of this yeah, video. Yeah, but you know what? They were my garden buddies for 11 and a half years. Oh, uh, they were our babies for and 11 were, and a half years. They're older than my kids. Well, our kids. Yeah, that's been a, it's been a tough couple of weeks. So anyone wondering where <sighs> we've been, yes. we've been. And now, and now, of course, like I have the heart monitor on during that whole thing. So if there's anything wrong with my heart, they're going to find it. Um, but that was really sad. I they, Those were like my first original boys and uh, my little garden buddies. So... Yeah, unfortunately, Otis had a brain tumor, and it was getting pretty bad the last yeah. couple of weeks, so. He had seizures and infections, and Ziggy, his brother, they've never been apart, um, and he had some, I don't know, too much information, but he had some other issues, um, and his back legs were giving out. He couldn't make it up the stairs anymore, and, you know, I wanted them to go with dignity, and it was time for one of them, and they needed to go together. They just... They've always been together, and I feel like, ugh, it's and, so hard. 
and we had we had a awesome vet come to the house and it, yeah. it was actually a it was a peaceful experience you know sad but peaceful yeah and you know what we do recommend that most pet owners should be with their pets if they're going to put them down you don't want to just let them go to some stranger and then have them looking around going what's going on and then you know it's always good to be around well, even bringing them to the vet is not like, you know, our dogs are like, they're so nervous when they go to the vet. So it's like having them just comfortable in our own house. And, you know, it was, it was a, the best we could do for them. And, uh, but we still have Jax and Cleo who are just a little pleasure, but they're not, it's not the same. They don't cuddle behind my, behind my legs and they don't like, you know, they, those were my boys. So anyway, rest their souls. Uh, the garden season will go on. They won't pee on anything anymore. I guess that's the one highlight of anything. But well, we always have them when you know in our memories, and we have them on video quite a bit. They always, oh yeah. They always camera bombed us when we were filming. <laughs> well, yeah, they were. They always followed us around. My little deer chasers. I'm definitely gonna need the deer fence now because those two were the ones that were like, if anything's moving out there, I gotta. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's a little bit, you know, it's been a crazy, now with the holidays coming and um, things are always crazy. And I think hopefully things will settle down a little bit after the first of the year. And uh, hopefully we have some good things coming and we can keep you just updated on what we're doing. Probably not as often as we normally do, but uh, we'll try to share some things that we filmed over the summer that we probably, we didn't even have time to show um or put together so we'll we'll do something but anyway i look forward to hearing from all what all of you are doing uh and you know some of you are in warmer zones so i feel like you're gonna be jumping the gun before i do so yeah share, was, share your experiences i was gonna ask you is it too early to be doing these lilies or no. what is the right time to start i mean it, it this is a lot of work uh if you want to start them early you can you can start them anytime it depends on how long you want to tend to them like we have four months at least that these are going to be inside and not brought outside so that's a lot of tending to these when they start to get bigger and they do start to grow really fast most people will just put these seeds in the ground outside and let them sprout naturally but i'm impatient in case you haven't noticed so i want them to start now so that in august or september i can see a new possibly a bloom like when I grew the ones last year, it took till August, but I got to see my seedlings bloom and some of them were so pretty and some of them were like, ooh, I waited all year for you. A little, a little dicey, but you know what? The ones that you, that bloom and that you are so proud of, that's what makes this whole thing over winter worth it. And plus, what else am I gonna do over winter? Nothing. I could bug you all um, I could buy lilies. Did you see the lily? Yeah, I, I oh was going to say, we know what you've been doing. <laughs> so, Lily yeah. auction well, addiction. You know what? Can you believe, like, $3,000 for a lily? Like, I mean, I guess if I was rich, it wouldn't be a big deal. But it's like, for the for the everyday person who wants, like, the next hot thing, boy, that could get really expensive. So, I did I did dabble in a few auctions that were less than the newest and trendiest lilies so it'll be exciting to see what you know what i can cross here but it's a hobby for me these people are out for like they're out for blood man <laughs> three thousand dollars for one lily yeah. for a seed no a lily the actual lily so he sends you the lily yes one fan or maybe it could be a single fan or a double fan but still it's one one fan but that's actually like bloom size it better be bloom size for that price but the thing is when hybridizers good hybridizers like offer these a lot of times they don't have like a public website that you can you don't you don't really see them offer them too often so when it happens everybody's like oh my god we've got to get it directly from here how so, much would you have bid for that three thousand dollar lily if you were around or you weren't around well you know what i'm talking about <laughs> If I, if I didn't have, if, if I had no control, I don't know. The thing is, I'm also like a little competitive. So when people outbid me, I don't like that. Like, I'm kind of like, no, I'm going to do And I've done that with seeds before. I get caught up in that, like, oh no, you're not going to do that to me. And that costs, you know, it costs you. But now, don't we have a relative to that $3,000 lily that's about to come and grow out of here maybe we can no. get like 1500 for it no 
this is a different this is a different one the one that the one that went for three thousand was from a um john culpa he's a hybridizer that he doesn't have like a website or anything but his lilies are like top notch so and they're hard to find like he doesn't a lot of these people if they have really decent lilies they're going to hybridize the heck out of them and whatever and they're not going to offer them to the public because then the value goes up and they want to make their own lilies from that line that they've bred so it makes sense that's why the value is there but um yeah these guys know what they're doing like me i'm just horsing around but i kind of want to dabble in the big deals like I know. So it doesn't really seem like a lot if somebody paid us five hundred dollars for a lily, does it? I know if I could get that, that'd be great. But I gotta grow it. I mean, you have to like watch it for three years. You gotta record it. It's gotta multiply. There's a lot to it. It's not as simple as just making three thousand dollars. I mean, that guy put some time into his lilies to breeding them. As a matter of fact, I think they said something about. Um, when you're hybridizing lilies and you're growing your seeds and you're trying to like weed out the good ones from the ex you know awesome ones that for every thousand like you get one solid introduction per thousand that you grow it's not a good ratio so that's a lot of growing seeds and weeding out the crappy ones and keeping the strong ones and making sure that their habit and their form and their plant and their bloom is all consistent and beautiful and the best and that takes a lot of work. That's years of watching it and, you know, just seeing how it does. Are so, there any women that are famous that do this? I hear a bunch of guys. Yeah, you know what? I don't know. I, I Yes, actually, there are. And and sometimes it's a husband and wife. Like, there's, um, there's some nurseries in Florida that do stuff. But the problem is lilies down there, a lot of them are evergreen. They don't go dormant, so I can't grow them here. They won't make it over the winter. So... That's the only problem. So there's a huge vacuum there for you to fill, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, it may be New York, but it, there's so many people now hybridizing because it's a popular thing to do. And everybody wants like the new best thing. This is more like just a hobby. I wouldn't want to grow thousands of lilies to find one. I just want to know that I can do it. And it intrigues me. I, like, I'm interested to see what I can create. And then I have something that no one else has in my garden. That, that to me is the value. Like... I don't need to register our lily or sell it or get into all that. I just, I want something beautiful that I can call my own that I created, even if it's from someone else's lilies, obviously, but I would love to like cross whatever I want and just see and weed out my own pretty from the ugly and who knows? It's just exciting, but it gives me something to do over winter too, so. Can it's I like, make money hibernating home. lilies or no? Hibernating them? Yeah. What are you talking about? Hibernating. No. You can hibernate. I have been. I, it's been <laughs> I know, nice. I know. You have been. My back is good. Ugh. I you haven't had to do much work. It's true. It's true. It's nice, honey. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, don't. I I don't have to <laughs> there goes your heart. Replacement. I know. There goes the... There, oh, you have to send a replacement now. No. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're doing down in the basement in the dungeons in New York. Um, dungeons, I should say. But... So, yeah, people, if you see some videos and it looks like it's summertime, it's not actually summertime. We're just going <laughs> to probably throw up some stuff just to keep things going. We were going to make a Christmas tree decoration video, but, uh, yeah, you think that Caterpillar uh, episode was bad. You should have oh seen Oh, my that. God, stop what? it. What? I love my tree. I re We got a whole new tree last year. It was exciting. But this year, like, when I fluffed it out, we have a fake tree. And I was like fluffing the branches. Um, I had some holes to fill, but I ended up getting some like um, berry picks to fill in. <gasps> it looks beautiful now, but anyway, it's not my forte. Now I'm using my photography, by the way. You know, all the pictures that I mean, I love photography too, because why not? If you're in the garden and you can take pictures, it's amazing. Uh, but I, I printed off a whole bunch of four by six um, photos. And now I'm making like cards to send to people with my garden photos on there, which is so fun. Like, what else are you gonna do? Like, I'm just making things new and I can see my beautiful pictures, my flowers. Um, so it kind of brings back memories. Everything's so bright and cheery. And then you can, you know, I'm probably gonna give some cards away as Christmas gifts. 
um, little packs that I made that are like maybe all butterflies or all the bluebirds or you know my flowers or the sun garden or the shade garden so I have these little packs that I'm gonna give to people for Christmas um, or for the holidays and you know it, it, it brings me joy to do it because I love doing that kind of crafty stuff I'm not super good at it but I'm but I'm so happy with the way they've come out so that's exciting too but sounds anyway, good honey it's what I'm gonna be doing to keep myself busy and hopefully we are on to some great crosses and some beautiful blooms and hopefully it's it's gonna happen in 2022 I mean we're off to a good start Good deal. You look beautiful, and so do your lilies. Oh, oh yeah, they look they look magnificent. Well, they thank do. you. You're the best. You Happy holidays, too. everybody. Bye now.